How you doing, How's buddy? You know, I'm just becoming a fan of this show. I sit here for about, you know, 45 minutes and wait for my spot. And then I just become a fan of you doing your thing, man. Keep it up. You keep it up. That's good stuff. Relax. I had a what are you talking about? No, I, can't, I, had, I, I can't give you compliments. No, I don't know how to take them very well. How about this? Terrible. I had a dream last night that I killed you. Oh, wow. I don't know what. I don't, <laughs> I don't how know fucking strange is that? Well, I'd want to talk to a dream expert if that's good for me or bad for me of what that means in your head, you know? I had a dream that I, 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 have, a, I have a visual. I still remember it. Both of yep. my hands were around your neck. Right. And your face was getting ghost white. And uh, we were in the studio. Right. You would come in and were not happy. Okay. I think it was over money, right? Because that's the only time you get mad at me. Right. And I don't think we money hadn't come in or what something. And you sat down. These these are your previous experiences in your life that have filtered into the dream. <laughs> into the dream. I don't know what happened, but you. Well, we so we sat down to do the show. This is where it gets a little strange, by the way. Bijan is yeah. in chair one. Okay. Don't know why. In the studio, though. Yeah, that's weird. in the yeah. studio. Okay. okay. Yeah. You're across from me. Uh-huh. And you're pouting on the air. Yeah. You don't have a mic in front of you. It's weird. And you're sitting there, and I'm catching the vibe, and I'm like, well, what the fuck? What's going on? And I don't even realize that you haven't gone on the air yet. Uh-huh. I haven't even realized there's not a mic in front of you. I don't think that you realized that there wasn't a mic in front of you. You were just so checked out. You were just sitting there, and I was like, uh-huh. what the fuck is your problem? Right. He's like, the thing, the fucking money and the thing. And I'm like, well, fuck, man. So let me ask you a question. Your performance here on the show is based on the money that you're receiving? And you were like, yeah, it is. I think that's happened before. I think that's that's something that's happened in real life. I flew over the thing. Yeah. And I had both of, I had my two thumbs pushed up underneath inside your larynx. Uh And I was strangling you. Yeah. And you, I saw the look in your eyes, the blood was leaving, and then right. I woke up. Wow. What is that's that? A, that's dark, man. That That's a deep <laughs> inner hate that you have for me. It's you know, you always not, talk about, uh, I'm your guy. It, it, but it's there's not deep, inner hate. There's it's like not. an inner deep hate that found its way into your dream. And that one time you were so mad at me that you, you wish you could go back. And literally murder me. I don't think it had anything through. to do with that. Have you ever murdered me in your dreams? You have. No. You've definitely murdered me you on the way do, home. You, for, for, you know what it is? Is You don't ever make your way into my dreams. You've never, I don't know what it is. You have leave such a lasting impact in real life that when I go to my dreamland, <laughs> I just don't want it. I just don't want it anymore. Like, I That's just what it dream. is. And sleep and, you know, have nightmares that, you know, are like, you Yeah, know, I don't normal. enter your dreams because I've just been so good to you. Okay, how about this? When you drive home, have you ever driven home from here and been like, man, I wish I could fucking off this guy? No, never. I don't, Doesn't, I don't get the murder thoughts. I right? don't you either. What is yeah, that? That's a good thing, right? Yeah, I don't ever leave somewhere, even if I'm super angry with a person, be like, man, I wish I could kill that person, and they were never around. I've those never had dark, that either. Yeah, I don't. Those I, are dark thoughts. I've never fantasized about killing someone. I fantasize about someone not being around anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah it does. Yeah, it does. You want them to be okay, but you don't want them around you. Yeah, That's I don't necessarily fair. even know if it's I want him to be okay. I want him to be oh, in pain and gone. Yeah, yeah. I don't okay. want him again, dead, though. Again, you just, you know, we're all in, <laughs> we just went through this whole thing about positivity. We're all in this together. And you got to, you know, not stop thinking I, I about people can't, like can't, that. I, ha, listen, I can't stop my dreams from happening. I fucking was no, trying to kill you in my right. dream last night. But you don't need to tell me about them, right? Because now I'm kind of like, oh, he has that. Thoughts what are you talking about? I would never hurt you. It's okay. I, I think you're getting that shit out in your dreams. Are you not? What does that mean? I don't know. You should call. You tell. Have Natty. If you Natty, get a go, dream. Natty, get, get a, a dream, dream therapist expert. on the phone. This dream is the therapist. and this go. is the thing, right, Vanger? And this is going to be helpful to us. Yeah. I've never liked doing celebrity interviews on the phone, but we are now in a phone interview type of yeah. atmosphere, right? Situation. Yeah. So it will be it will be easier for me to make calls to get famous and, people to talk. 
And listen, I love that Natty sends his, you know, his his outreach into the text message so we can read it. That's great because you know everyone can take constructive criticism. You should include examples of the show, like whether it's sound bites or whether it's an easy link to see the show, because nobody's going to see your email and search for it. They're going to see the email and what's in it, and it's the easiest thing for them to click on and listen to the show to get an example. They won't search for you, even if you're like, oh, it's the same show, and it's on iTunes. You have to include it in yeah, that. Yeah, send page. the link, the iTunes Apple link with the fucking ask. Natty. Yeah, and even maybe Charlie could give you some sound bites. That they oh, no, 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 Charlie get. has that package. Yeah, the package, that there's a coordination right there. That package would be great because that gives you a snapshot. Of okay, the how about this? Vanger, will you get all that to him? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. You think I'll you will him. or you will? I, did I say I think I will or I said I will? I think I said I will, <laughs> and then you tried to come back over the top and be like, you think you will? To make me realize, like, oh, okay, yeah, get I guess on. I really will. I will. I will get on it. Uh, this is the part of the show where you usually ask me how my weekend was. Okay, That's hold on. I, <laughs> hold on I, a second. Also, one other. I'm going to take one other shot at you, and then we'll get into your weekend. Okay. What? Why didn't you answer Natty back on the text chain last night? Um, because and, 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 he's not, not important excuse. enough. If if no, I fired a text, you'd answer me. Shane, how about this? There, there are people in your life. That are more important that if they fire a text, you shoot back, and the others that don't, correct? Well, when or you didn't. looked at his text, yes. Why? Why did you not answer it? Like that's the. Uh, that's the. I'm okay. just fascinated by that moment. You're on the couch. You're but not Shane, that. You, let me ask. Let you're me not ask that you busy, right? No, 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 We're no, quarantined. All, no, no, no. Yeah, but it's 11 p.m. on a Sunday night, and we get in bed early. Okay. Right? Because my girls got to wake up at seven, so we're in bed. So I also at that time was in bed. You know playing a poker tournament, right? So I'm in bed playing a poker tournament. I get the text. I look at it, okay? It's not an urgent text that needs to be responded right away, but I guess I could just said what I thought and started that No, that's that a dialogue. fair... Uh, listen, that is a fair explanation of why you didn't answer the text. That I I back that. I back Thank that. Thank you. That's Thank fine. You. I appreciate that. Um, it was 11 p.m. I was going to get back to him today or, you know, before the show started, and... You know, you got on me. I understand. I feel like I, I feel I feel like you didn't need to. I'm trying to did. build team around here, man. Yeah, you know what? We did, it did build team a little bit. It irked me a little bit because that was the first thing I woke up to in the morning. You know, like that's what I read. I'm like, oh, really? Like that's how I'm starting my week. Why am I like, not invited into these poker team uh, tournaments? Okay, well, here's the thing, Shane. We'll do it offline. But the poker thing, will you take all the time to like download the stuff? Pokerstars.net, right? Pokerstars.net, and then you need to probably pay three bucks to get some extra chips, and then you want to be involved in the whole text message chain and and Venmoing people. If you down for that, then yes, you're in. They do it every night, and I think you'd be a great addition. I will Venmo the money. I'm not talking to anybody on a text chain. Is that is that a must? No, it's not a must, but and I will help you through setting it up. How about this? You don't need to talk. I'll help you through setting it up if you'll do it, and then you'll be ready for the one tonight. How about that? Now, what time is the one tonight? They usually do them at like 10, 9 or 10. All right, I'm out tonight because I've got uh, war fine. zone. But I want to play fine. this week. No, they do them every night, and I want you to be in them, and I apologize for not getting you in. I will get you in. What's I the buy-in? Uh, it's 30 bucks. Got it. And ha have you won one yet? Yes, I have. And is it winner take all, or is it first, second, third? Oh, okay. Can I give you? Can I? Can, will you give me the time to explain to you the first? So, so the first, the second tournament we played, the the decision was made. Hey, when you guys get to the end, the last two in there, they can decide who wins, right, or who get whatever. The so they can split decide they to chop do. it. They can they decide can sixty it, forty because I've got sixty percent of the chips. Yeah, and you got, exactly. Got it. Got exactly. it. Okay. So the night before in the first tournament, they the first guy took twenty percent of the the second guy took twenty percent. And I'm like, oh, so the second night coming through, I'm like, oh, I'm probably gonna get twenty percent here. Didn't matter the chip count, and I didn't take the time to discuss. So then after it was over and I lost because my chip count when it got heads up was bad, he wanted to keep it all. And it got into this argument within the check chain of like, what's that fair, blah, blah, blah. But it was my fault for not stopping the game to discuss. I'm sorry. Anyway, the next night I we faced heads up against them and won. And we had decided already to do a rule. Second place gets 20% in 
if that if anyone cares. Got it. All right. So it's two seventy. So the two seventy because nine are you right or eight? What is it? Nine yeah, or eight? We had fourteen on Saturday. I guess he's getting these guys from East Coast. So now it's turned into like a little poker club. <laughs> are you breaking any laws? I probably. I probably should not be talking about it, but there's, you know, there's not taking a rake. So I think the law is as long as you're not taking a rake of the pot to make money, you're allowed to have home games. Listen, if 14 dudes want to get on PokerStars.net and they all want to allow PokerStars.net to decide basically who is going to get money transferred to them, that's fine. Yeah, Yeah. That's 14 grown men deciding that. That's not gambling. No, and, and as long as they're not taking a rake, I believe is the rule. I'm not sure. I just love poker. I love playing. I used to play so much when I was a kid. It's such a well, you're bug. gonna play I, a lot now. I just love. I love the whole thing about it. And tournament poker is my favorite because when you get into cash poker, where you're playing against other people that their bankrolls are more than you, they can play a little different. But when you start everybody at the same number. And then you go the blinds up and you do a tournament. That's the true form of poker, and I absolutely love it. No, it's love it. not. The true form of poker is no limit hold'em. That's the this true. Is, well, this is no limit hold'em, but it's a tournament. So right. You're saying difference? everybody starts with the same. Doesn't everybody start with the same buy in anyway? You're just talking about because people start rebuying immediately. Yeah. Well, like if I go to a cash game, and I've done this before. I think I've played a cash game before with one of your friends, and easy. I knew- careful i knew who he was and i was like oh this guy's at this game cool and it's like a decent sized game a couple couple hundred you know easy right and so he's playing the way he's playing is aggressive and that's how you make money in poker if you're able to put money in because you can afford it you'll make money back so it felt it just didn't feel right to me that i'm thinking about this money a little more i'm tidy holding it a little differently than this guy whose bankroll he could just 500 bucks is like a dollar to him no you're he's bullying you around the table right and he's and so that form of poker i understand and get it and if i had the bankroll for it you could make a lot of money i don't have the bankroll so i like the tournaments where i can beat that guy then because when i make a bet it's his tournament life at stake all right but not to to get into the fucking weeds but listen I could help you with those other games. When the bully comes in and he's yeah. got all this fucking money and you know you're completely outmatched, right, with buyback capability and yeah. all that shit, yeah. just tighten the fuck up and and, then wait. and knit and yeah. wait to get a good hand and then you'll double up and then you'll be all right. But yeah, I just... wish I was playing those cash games back in the day when I had you on my shoulder because I that's how I felt and I felt like I'd get good hands. And a lot of poker, people don't realize, you'll get a hand in, to start and you'll think it's a good hand, but it's shit. Because if you even if you hit a piece of it, you're going to have to make choices against people that probably have monster hands. So you can't just sit there like a rock and only play good hands, but you should be getting in pots with good hands. That's all I'll say. Well, no, listen, I it's fun if you don't if you're fucking my if you're bankrolled, if you don't have a lot of money and you got creeps in the in the building that are just throwing money around, that's like a huge fucking that's a that's what you dream about if you're a guy without without a lot of money. You just knit I, and I, play dude, three hands. I get it, but I get it. But then I put my money in good. That's the only thing you want as a poker player is to put your money in good. And even when you do that, you still lose. So if I only had... <laughs> I don't, well, first of all, I don't know enough about your playing, right? So I don't know if you're really getting your money in good. Oh, and I'm, t- I'm telling I don't you, know. I've played a lot of poker. You yeah, talked about I don't know. poker. I don't know. You th- well, get in and play. You and, 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 Listen. The fact that I've already won one tournament in the fact with in the three five days should say that I could play a little bit. Well, I got so, news for you. If I've only got thirty dollars on the line, you better hold on because I'm fucking gonna be flint. I'll, I'll be a crazy person. Well, listen. What do you mean? You pay thirty bucks and you get three thousand chips, and that's it. You play those chips. Right. I might push chips? on the first one blind. Fuck great. it. And, I'm gonna double great. up. I'm pushing. Great. And then you'll lose, and you can pay 30 again, and you can pay 30 again. It's two rebuys is the max. So if you want to throw 90 in there. Oh, you can. Your... Oh, that's great. Yeah, you get two rebuys. So the pop builds. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I'm definitely in tomorrow. I'm in tomorrow for okay. tomorrow night's game. I got you. I got you. <laughs> well, so how was your part. weekend, fucking Corona boy? It's really great. I signed up for this one company. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Uh, Hello Fresh. You ever heard of this? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard of Here comes the fucking snark. Have you ever heard of HelloFresh? I have. Uh, 
I they're actually never... running new ads today, Vanger. That is perfect because this was my first weekend of truly jumping in the HelloFresh bucket. And they send you they send you four meals and they're just packed in bags. And my girl and I had such a great time meet, like making everyone in this quarantine life. We are just looking forward to our next HelloFresh meal because it's so much fun to make. And the food is so good. And I think it's so great. I, I wish their prices were a little cheaper, but I totally understand. Well, but here's the deal. If you that want that, you go to HelloFresh.com backslash Shane Show 10. What? HelloFresh.com backslash Shane Show 10. Shane That's the new 10. code. Oh, my gosh. Use that code. What was good? Get... What was good about oh this shit? Oh, my gosh. Can I tell you, please? No, you're gonna... <laughs> I want to hear. You're going you're gonna to laugh at me. And I saw something good... about a fucking sesame shrimp or something. You're going to laugh at me, but, but it's so cool. You have the app, and you get to pick all these meals. So this is what we made this weekend. We started it off. HelloFresh.com with... backslash Shane Show 10. <laughs> we started it <laughs> off. Ahead. With the Baja rockfish with yellow rice and salsa fresca and unbelievable. Okay, what is that? What's a rockfish? Uh, it's like a white fish. Okay. It's like a white fish, and this particular one is from Baja. For right? why not? It's, why not, marketers? I think, I think. These guys are like was, you in the fucking uh, Milo and Olive, the hibiscus two, punch. Here, and the, here's, here's what I was worried about with this thing, Shane, is I like to eat food. I'm a I'm a 37 year old man who likes to eat, and Got so it. I was worried about. Did you the double portions. up? Yeah, did you double up? You make well, two. Well, no, it's expensive. It's expensive to get to double it up. But uh, this company's done such a good job of the portion sizes. I've never eaten a meal where like, wow, I'm perfectly full. I maybe want a little dessert, but wow, I don't need seconds, and the food's all gone, and that's two people. So if it's one person, you're gonna have a little leftovers. But two, pe- it's perfect for two people and the rock, rock fish was amazing the next night we made the sizzling hoisin shrimp that's that was unbelievable yeah a common was, term for several species of fish referring to their tendency to hide among the rocks so this could wow. have been any kind of fish what else did you been, have you had a shrimp and a green bean sizzling hoisin or i don't know how you say that word hoisa shrimp <laughs> okay h-o-i-s-i-n hoisin now how do you wait? Oh, you walk me through the walk me through the preparation. It's all okay, in a, so, okay, oh, so it's all in a box, get, right? You take it out in, the box. It's all in one box. You take it out of the box. Banger's Obviously, out the lunch. He's gone. Pay no, the carb. You, He's having a you, fever. You're having a blast. No, in a good way. You're having a blast. Oh. You're, you're fucking. You're experiencing HelloFresh. dot com backslash Shane Show ten at, at the height of its fucking. Go ahead. Well, I think it's such a good product at this time when I don't want to go to the market, right? And I just want you to bring the food to the door. I wipe it down. I wipe down everything you give me. I wash and, and dry all the produce, and then you're going to cook it. So okay, you so safe. you get it, you pull it out, and then you wash all the produce down, so it's fresh. Yeah, every, every recipe, the first step is wash and dry all produce. And yeah. so you take up and you wash it. And then it's step by step, and the timing is right too. So it's like, oh, use this pan for the pork, and then wait, keep it going because you're going to use the same pan for the fig jam in our figgy <laughs> balsamic pork. And it was literally like a restaurant level meal, right? It was so good. It blew us away. And I think you can hear in my energy, I wouldn't just be saying this. No, you're on fire right now. Hoisin, uh, sauce used in Chinese cuisine as a glaze for meat. Oh, yeah. It's a it, it, listen. It's a lot of potatoes. It's a lot of rice. It's a lot of vegetables. It's a lot of proteins with sauces. We once I get off the phone with you, I'm gonna go do the, our last meal from our Friday delivery, the roasted veggie farro bowl. Can't wait. Literally, <laughs> literally cannot wait. It's and the so shits much fun. and the and the veggies are fresh. Every the food is it tastes organic. I t- I've eaten a lot of organic food in my life, and you can taste the difference with organic and and the stuff tastes organic or at least good farms and it's good vegetables and you know it's just fun i don't know what it is it maybe make I, listen at my age i've not had too many home-cooked meals like on a consistent basis and living in the quarantine you do or we are choosing to and i don't know if it tastes better after you make it and put all the the effort into cutting and mixing and doing it but it's been a treat so i appreciate that this show has brought hello fresh into my life. HelloFresh.com backslash Shane Show 10.
What else did you do this weekend? Uh, so on Friday night, uh, we, another mutual friend of, of ours invited us, me, to a trivia, a Zoom trivia. So I don't know if you you can probably guess what that means, but you're a big fan of Zoom, right? I think you sent out a tweet. I played, uh, yeah, I played Werewolves and Villagers this weekend. It was incredible. Oh, I, so I thought you were doing that's awesome. And and so we got invited to play trivia, Zoom trivia. I guess normally on Friday nights at the Sycamore Tavern in Hollywood, they do trivia night. And so this guy, I guess, decided to do Zoom, where then every person can just sign in and you do trivia. He reads the trivia just like you were at Sycamore Tavern. He tells everyone to get a drink, and it was so much fun. How's he getting was, paid? He is getting paid on a donation tips tip basis. Venmo the guy. Yeah, we Venmoed him. I think my girl Venmoed. Uh, we Venmoed him twenty. That's very sweet of you. That's great. Yeah, because it was really fun, and it's the whole Zoom thing is so interesting because they've revolutionized the game. Whatever that teleconferencing is, they win. Yeah, unbelievable. And and was that around before this happened, and we just didn't know about it? By the way, I think it was like laying around, and now everybody, because we're the most, what are we? I mean, we we as humans, we figure shit out, right? So we're in this new normal or this new thing. We're all, and so people have just been hammering the Zoom, dude. I was on Thursday night. I was yeah. in a Zoom. The place where I go to not drink and die? Yeah, great. That's what they should do. Okay, so I went and Zoomed. Perfect. There were 365 people on this thing. That's so amazing. There were 30 pages of people. That's amazing. Don't you see how cool that is? And one guy was was the speaker. Right. And he spoke for a half an hour, right? Everybody could watch the guy speak. And then afterward, he took questions. And then, like, you can raise your hand with the Zoom software. And the secretary would see it and then call on people. And it was fucking insane. So let me ask you a question. Once we get back to normal, don't you think that that could happen like this still? For sure. If you've got any money at all, buy Zoom. It's a dude, I would, people will do Zoom shit after. This is over because they will have learned that this is something that's the. I mean, it's crazy. There's no, so it's, it's wild. It, the it's Zoom so thing productive. is beyond. It is beyond. You said this morning, you're like, oh, isn't it great that I just wake up and just walk to work like this? Everybody's doing that now. That's what everybody is currently doing. What and happens I, in June if everybody in America is like, you know what? I'm good with this. Yeah, let's exactly. just stay home. Fuck it. Government just keeps sending us loot. Uh, we're not going well, back to work. How about this? I think at some point when even when it opens, right, like, OK, so the restaurant businesses, they can open and everything gets going. And I still think you're going to see people working from home because I still think the productivity level at home is high. Well, well I think people are learning how to be productive at home. Right. The Agreed. panic, the panic of money and like, where is it coming from and this and that. And it's like it's forced people to learn how to self start from home or to get more motivated. And when you learn how to do that from home, I bet there will be a major part of the workforce, right, that continues to work from home after this. No question. Just because they're getting more done or they've learned, they might be getting more done now than they were when they were going to work. I agreed. I agree. And, and I and the whole the whole thing also, because I watched, and I think this was Zoom, last night I watched the Fox at Home concert. Did but, you see that? No, hold on a second. Zoom yeah. started in 2013, all right? Yeah. So it waited yeah. seven years for the coronavirus, and now everybody in America is going to have Zoom. Everybody. Good for yeah. them. Good for them. It's crazy, too, because there's other ones. Like, I got invited to a house party, right? Have you been invited to one of those? Come on, man. Like, I, I, yeah. I Come on. I ain't you doing no it. fucking house party. So there was but like that's a. That's the same thing. It's the same thing as Zoom. It's just the name of the app, right? So someone invited me to their house, and I guess it's a place that rather you can just go, and the certain friends are a part of this house. That and it's then to be like, oh, this person's in the house, and you can go chat them up, or they can just be there doing nothing. Like that's what my first in my first day of having it seems like. But that's what, this concert. Did you hear about this? No. What is this? So Fox did an at-home concert where they got Elton John got different artists involved that were going to perform songs to raise money for different charities feeding America I think was one of them and and the, you could watch it and it's going to raise money so the bands would just perform their songs from their houses each band member set up so one guy has got the keyboard and he's on zoom and he's and everyone's clocked into one thing and performing 
and it was cool. It was like a it was like a Zoom jam session. I think all bands should do it. I think that like you know the, the Chili Peppers could do it, and they could just you know raise money for something. And they don't have to, but but Chad could be in one his house <laughs> and flee. Yeah, and, I, and I, I got it. news for you. That's not gonna happen. No, I know. I'm just giving you that as an example. <laughs> That that would be really cool, and you get a lot of viewers watching because no one ain't got shit to do, and it sounds just as good as uh, of the song, like you hear it on the radio. That's not so. true because the zoom. How about this? I don't for whatever reason I've got the zoom rigged into the mic, yeah, so when okay. people hear me, they're like, "Jesus Christ, you sound amazing." So right. I guess maybe everyone's had someone's come set something up at their house. No, I think what the, the people aren't. Every, you, there's okay. no good sound coming out of your fucking iPhone. No, but you're talking into something that's producing a good sound, and all of these headphones and, and devices have such good sound quality that if you're using something that is just a good digital device, it's going to sound great. And what what happens with this? Is this house party about dating and fucking and all that, or what? Is that no. what it's really about, or what is it? It's just we all hang out? Yeah, it just seemed like Zoom. <laughs> but it's just the same thing. Like, you want to, you know, my uh, Jennifer, every night is there's somebody, they're doing a digital happy hour at like six o'clock where there's people on the Zoom, on the house party, having a drink and just talking about everything. And people still want that group chatter. Yeah, I'm out. I, like I, I don't need no happy hours with strangers on the Zooms. No fucking well, no, thanks. It's not strangers. It's people you know. What are you talking about? It's not just a <laughs> random, like, go to just, hey, how's it going? Let's meet. It's like you set up a house party or a Zoom with your friends. Got uh, it. I don't know nothing about it. Uh, you, what else is going on? There's lots of press conferences that I watch now, right? Okay. So I watch, uh, my. I think I watched my first New York Cuomo government press conference in the morning on Saturday, and I had not I had heard about him, and I knew he was smart already. But the way he delivers the information with the slides to his right, who is Cuomo? Amazing. Yeah, Cuomo. No, Cuomo's got that shit nailed. He makes me feel well, safe. I like he, watching him. He, I don't even. We don't even live in his state. I don't care. I, he just seems like he's got a handle well, on shit. Well, I think also it's good if even if you're not in a state to see how his state's responding and what's happening in his state because that could happen in your state. Yeah, the but I got. Thing that's, I would do. Newsom's done a pretty phenomenal job. I ain't no Newsom guy. I'm not a yeah. communist, but he's done a pretty great job, man. He We're has, pretty locked up. No, we're good. We're good. I'm we are a, really I'm not, good. I'm just saying I like watching Cuomo's when it starts and his demeanor. And, and Newsom's great. But Cuomo and how he delivers the information, I learned something. I love learning things like the the ventilators normally on a normal patient that needs a ventilator in the sure, hospital. I see sure. He's, they're on that ventilator for three to four days. Okay? that And then they're good. Right? The coronavirus you, is getting people to be on it for like 11, right? That's 11 the problem. To 21 days. Yeah, that's a 11 problem. 11 to 21 days. So you would think they had enough ventilators because after a couple of days, oh, we got it again. But these people need the ventilators for 11 to 21 days. And then I didn't. I learned also that the alternative, if you don't have a ventilator, is a mask that has a bag on the end that somebody needs to push. Be the the, push the and, ventilator. It's a cell so you, ventilator. It's a self ventilator, but I don't. I think if I, I get, if you had to do that, if you're out of it and you're like having trouble breathing, coughing, you, I need someone else to do that for me. Well, no, you, I don't know. you've seen those things when they, you know, they're working yeah. on the EM doing like the people the in the ambulances yeah. that big bag on the thing and they keep pushing yeah. the bag. Yeah, listen, it, if there's no ventilators and you can't breathe, let's get one of them cracking. At least it's better than nothing. Well, no, I know, it, but that's why the ventilators are so important because you probably need a second person to just breathe for that one person. It's just, it's just crazy how, and he, he makes it describe how every natural disaster is its own unique thing, right? So people say like, oh, America wasn't prepared for this. We could have prepared better. It's like, we didn't know truly that we were going to need all these ventilators. Do you agree with that? Yes. Like, there's nothing that could have, well, here's the deal. Regardless of whether you like Trump, don't like Trump, this, that, or the other, when someone in your in the state, right, Cuomo, and the and somebody in the CDC guy a year ago is like, "Yo, man, in case of a pandemic, we're really short on ventilators. Is yeah. there any way you can carve out in the budget that I can get go get thirty thousand ventilators?" And the guy's like, yeah. "Fucking, you crazy? I got yeah. schools and shit. I can't be spending the money on a pandemic that may or may not ever come." So it's not necessarily Trump's fault that there was that we weren't prepared. Nobody in the world was prepared. 
Nobody. Nobody. It's how fast you act, and we still haven't, you know. That, I think for sure, you can have an argument about. 30 states, I believe, I think, have a national stay-at-home order. And there are other states that still don't have it. And I wonder if every state is going to have to do it. It makes you think if you would have just done the national lockdown earlier, we wouldn't have to go through this. The fact that they're trying to treat every state like its own curb, you'll see different hotspots happen. It's so frustrating. Anyway, I'll get off that. Well, I was going to leave. I was going to. I watched the Trump press conference yesterday. Okay, perfect. And 16 different times he was like, we would have lost 2 million people. Right? Right. That didn't close, yeah. That will now be the narrative for no, the I rest know. of the time. Somebody got in his head finally and said, "Yo, man, we need to tell everybody yep. that had we not done what we've done, two million people would have died, and in four months, you can be like, "Look what we did. Two hundred thousand people died." But had I not acted in the way that I did, yeah. we would have lost two million. Therefore, reelect me. Like, yeah. th- that's no. what the message is going to be. I know. Period. I know. And it might I work. I know. I know. And but but here's the thing that at least a bright side is I don't know if it was Fauci on the Sunday shows the day before talking about the potential millions of deaths, right? Didn't it come right out after that? Like he had the Rose Garden press conference after Fauci was like, yo, 2.2 million people could die. Now, I think he probably knew that. But on the inside and maybe he wasn't believing it. But then when they said it on television, it seemed to make it real for him. And then someone was like, hey, Donald Trump, this would be a win for you. I know how you like your wins if you just say 100,000 because 100,000 people were only at 2,500. You're saying it's a win if we have 97,000 more people die? Well, I listen, if zero. you start – but if you start to paint the narrative as had we not done what we're doing, 2 million would have died – it makes it seem like he's really done a great job. They were dodging that two million number for months, yeah, and I then know. somebody in the room was like, "No, no, 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 no. We're going to use this to our advantage. You're now going to go out for the next six months and say, listen, if it wasn't for us, two million people would have died.' So I, now I, they I, are going to manipulate that number to use it I to know. help them. I Period. Know, but at least the only positive thing is at least it saves lives because finally this motherfucker has come around. That was the first press conference where he was – and he still can't help himself being like, I did this, and if I didn't do that, and if we were the best country, we're testing the most of any world. Like, we have to be the best. But finally, at least yesterday, he kind of was like, this is going to be really bad. Because he's figured people. out a way to use the narrative to his advantage fair. in order to no, get reelected, fair. right? It's, so it's, it's nothing. he does nothing at all ever unless it's within it's in his own self-interest nothing i don't understand where he thinks like the whole conversation about the 10 to twenty thousand masks are being ordered by these hospitals in new york and then now three hundred thousand masks are being ordered and he's like i don't understand the discrepancy implying that there are somebody the- sneaks or yeah that there's a conspiracy theory what behind is- the mask because he's crazy that's all by the way you have i heard a commentator say this is true you have every you know, uh, enforcement, law enforcement agency at your disposal. Then go do that. If you think that was the case, have someone look into it. Why are you being like, yeah, someone should really look into that? Like, I just he just uses words for his own. And and, and the the way he treated that the reporters, the, the woman had a great question. She was literally reiterating or just saying the quote he said. No, the you mean like, yeah, you mean and he didn't like it. And then he starts attacking her about her moving jobs and shit. It's so. He's such a toddler, and he's. But by the way, we got problems because there is no other story than the coronavirus. He, as the president of the United States, is at the middle of, is in the middle of all of this. There will be. I'm telling you, they will find a way to make this look like he did a good job, and yep. then in the meantime, Joe Biden has been. All of the fucking room is being sucked out. I mean, there is nothing to talk about other than Corona and how Donald Trump is handling it. And it's going to be very, very bad in July and August when Joe Biden's out there trying to figure out how to fucking spin this. Because the only way that they can spin it is to talk about what Trump should have done. Yeah. And people are not going to be caring about that. People are going to be like, yeah, fuck, but- we would have lost two million. We only lost 200,000. Yeah. At the end of the day, the guy didn't do such a bad uh, yeah. job. How about this? That's going to be the most. If it's 200,000, that's going to be the most American lives lost on their watch. Is that not true or close to? Like, you talk about World War II, talk about all these presidents had deaths on their watch. This 
would be the biggest, and I think that would crush him. Joe Biden is doing a podcast now to to help combat that, I believe, so he can get his information out there. Anything to get his voice out there because no one cares about nothing but corona and how Trump's handling it. I'm telling you, you think, it's bad. Are you on the side of people shouldn't watch his press conferences? They should make they should not watch it because of the the misinformation. I don't listen. I don't. It, it, it's not a matter of neither here nor there, right? It's it's. I watch it every day, waiting for one of the reporters to get under his skin. They're like, yeah. it's like he's a big orange badger, and the reporters are just poking him with a stick. And yeah. I just keep watching, waiting for him to melt down. Like he is, he does every time. He, he is car crash time. reality it's, television. It's so crazy to me. Like this is what scares me: is there were two governors, I believe, that were talking about how he's handling this thing and not appreciating him. Right? Wasn't that Gretchen, Gretchen Whit- Whitmer? Is that her name? The the the, Michigan? the governor of Michigan and the governor of Washington. Uh, yeah, he didn't. Like, and then he was started to basically say, "Listen, if you don't want to fucking deal with me, then I won't call you back." That's terrible. It's awful. It's beyond that's awful. Terrible. And that's and he and, tried to spin his way out of it yesterday. And now governors are realizing that need help because it's state on state with their own, you know, virus. Governors are realizing that to get help, they have to suck the like, Donald Dick. Suck the Donald Dick, and that's a dictatorship tax. Like that's crazy. <laughs> crazy. That's crazy. I I also thought it was a really good question. He didn't have a good answer. Why Florida has gotten all of its request right florida started late had the beaches and they've gotten all of their requests for medical needs fulfilled by the federal government no like and they're the first state and he had a terrible question for that and it's just that, that whole thing i i can't stand well the governor of florida listen 60 percent of the state of florida is over is senior citizens right this guy should have been the first state to close everything down. He should have gotten the information and the science and said, oh, this yep. affects old people the most. I have a lot of old people in my state. I don't give a shit what anybody else is doing. I'm locking Florida up. He didn't do that. He wanted the extra revenue from the spring breakers that were going down to the beaches, so he decided to hold that open so that people could go and party and pass the virus so that his restaurants and stores could Super make money. Spreaders. And he's Super just, spreaders. he's fucking liable for people dying. That's what I think. He is liable for people. They were also saying that Fox News might be liable for people dying and people might have a legal right because they were spouting misinformation and not taking it as seriously. That there, I read a tweet that there's concerns within Fox. Yeah, that good that luck with possible. that lawsuit. That will I never just, happen. I, the, 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 fine. Fine. All right. We're getting out of here. We've done this fucking hour 15. You good? Uh, Yeah. You want to do a quick banger, Bill? Yeah. Let's go. Hold on. Uh, yeah. Do you know about the app next door? I do not. Okay, what is the a, app next door? Oh, next door is an app that's been around. It's a great app before Corona. It was a great app that you could sign in and say your address. And then there's like a message board that people close to that same address could hit on the message board and everyone could see it. And you could have, you know, it's it's like, a you know, Reddit for neighborhoods. Right. Got it. So this app now I read an article today that it has turned into a barter app. Right. So it, people need certain things. Right. Because not everyone gets to the store. So pe- you could go like they, they were saying examples of people would trade ham for Clorox wipes like it's turned in. So if you're looking to barter. You should go on your next door app, put your address in, and I'm sure there are people that if you need things, they might have for things that you have. And it's that's a, okay, it's a private social network for your community, so you get everybody in the neighborhood locked up. By the way, back uh, 30 years ago, you just went next door and shook a guy's hand and said, yo, you got any sugar? But we don't do that anymore because we keep ourselves locked away in our own houses, even Correct. before corona. But now I can be like, yo, man, anybody got any ham? And somebody's like, yeah, I got some ham. You got toilet paper? Yeah. And they swap it out. And they swap it out, whether you can just walk over and drop it off somewhere, and, and then you don't have to meet. Uh, I think it's probably <laughs> You don't between... have to meet. You don't have to meet. <laughs> I know. Yeah, It's so fucking terrible. I can't wait to hug you. I, you don't like getting touched. I'm going to hug the shit out of you, no, man, I, when this I, is I, over. I, no, I know. I can't wait for it. I can't wait for it. Uh, also, a lot of companies are talking about going on strike because they realize they're at risk while working, right? You know, Amazon in New York, they they went on strike, I believe. They feel they, I think they probably want pro, uh, PPE 
because they're emergency workers and, and maybe they want their pay higher because I think they offered them an emergency pay that they think isn't enough because they're put at risk every day. So Amazon went on strike. I think GM, there were people within GM that were like, we need to make ventilators. Like, why is our department not making ventilators? We could be because they weren't allowed to. They strike. But a strike that I'm more interested in is my girl and I discovered a little company called Instacart. Do you know what Instacart is? I do. Okay, Instacart, I think, is going Personal on Personal shopping, too. right? Personal shopping. So Instacart threatened to go on strike, and they say, I read that they say that when there's workers that threaten through social media they're going to go on strike, a lot of it's just talk. It doesn't actually happen. Sure. And it's try to get the company because they're feeling the social media wave. So they said Instacart was supposed to go on strike today. Instacart came out and said that they've had a 40% increase in workers that that the strike isn't true so who knows what's true but we got an instacart delivery tomorrow i hope it gets here it will by the way yeah by the way i think that instacart is a really good way for people to uh, that's the other thing is that you realize who hustles and who doesn't right like there are people in the world that are like fuck man i gotta pay my bills and i gotta figure this out in the time of corona and so they're going to Instacart, and they're saying, yo, hire me. I need to get something done, and I'll yeah. wear the PPE or whatever it is. Yeah. And because that's what people need to do in order to exist and survive. I agree. I, I, I fucking think- I, I celebrate people that are hustling, man. Listen, I'm, I I love it. I think if you're going to hustle, you need the PPE. I have a feeling that, and I read this, whether it's true or not, in the next 10 days, the CDC is going to come out and say that Americans should be wearing masks if they can because not only does the mask, it doesn't protect you as well as it does if you have it and you don't know, it prote- it doesn't spread it. So if everybody was wearing masks along with what we were doing, it would speed up the process of slowing the spread. So I think that measure might be taken. The masks are hard to find. We were using T-shirt sleeves, right? They, they've said that you could even use just a bandana because it gives you partial deflection from things. And... We went outside, and we saw a woman, and she was wearing a mask, and she became friendly with us. She's like, you guys need masks? And we're like, uh, yeah. She's like, yeah, I see you made them. I I got a bunch. I got 700 delivered to me every week. I'm like, who are you? She's Russian, okay? A, (laughs) those masks should probably be going to the hospital, but somehow she's getting them. And so she uh, went up to her place. She put, like, 10 of the surgical masks on a bush. Right for us to go get work across the street. Another woman almost came in and swiped them. We're like, excuse, excuse us, those are ours. She's like, can I have one? And we were like, yeah, here, here, yeah, sure, of course. But there, there was the first time. During it's mask this, I, insanity. It was the first time during this corona insanity that I felt the franticness off of a person. Besides, like you know, we talk and but so just be safe out there and. Happy birthday to DJ AM, right? Shane, is it? Oh, it? shit. Is it AM's birthday today? I thought uh, I saw that. Is it? I don't know. I think it is. Death day is, is in, Death day is in August or September. Yes, it's right around now. So it is right birthday. around it. Maybe happy it is birth- today. Happy birthday, DJ AM. I just thought you'd want to know that. And... He'd be having yeah. fun in this, man. He'd be playing poker Whoa, and having he, fun. And by the is, way, the Instagram Live DJ sessions would be fucking bananas. Bananas. There are DJs doing it, and it's great. And if you appreciate the DJ life, they're so talented. He would have been a, crushing it. Oh he would have had mugs gosh. up on the corner, fucking he chilling. Would've. He would have murdered it. He would have. All right, let's get out of here. I'll talk to you good tomorrow. Sh- good show. Talk to you tomorrow. All right, you, buddy. Bye.